I, I just died in your arms tonight. Must have been something you said. Hey, check it out. What up, jerks? Ooh. Yeah, got this thing working again, so I can be as annoying as I want to be. Benchmade Infidel. Nice auto knife. Generally, I think auto knives are trash, but, uh, you know, for an adult yo-yo, they can stab someone. This is a pretty good one. Let's go ahead and put that guy away, shall we? Tonight's topic is weird V-brakes. Sort of. I'm going to talk about a few of the stranger designs that I've found over the years. Um, you know, so when we speak of V-brakes, it's sort of generic. It's sort of like how you might say Kleenex when you mean facial tissue. Uh, V-brake is Shimano's, uh, it's their trademark, I guess. Um, they're sort of generically referred to as linear pole brakes. And so, what you have is you need high-powered brakes for mountain bikes. And up until this point, what you had were cantilever brakes. Now, they sit on the same posts as cantilever brakes. Cantilever brakes were sort of proto-mountain brakes. They were used in touring, they were used in cyclocross. Still are, actually, although disc brakes are rapidly supplanting them. What you have is two arms that sit up here. Brake pads come in, and then there's a central cable. It's called the straddle cable, which goes from side to side. Um, you need to have a cable stop somewhere. Sometimes it's in the fork. Sometimes it's up higher near the stem. The cable comes from your brake levers, usually road levers, sometimes mountain levers. Through the housing, down to the cable stop. Bare cable goes down and clamps to the straddle cable. It pulls up, the arms swing in, and you get stopping. Um, most of the classic cantilever designs are pretty piss poor. Um, when I taught the class here, we used to have a separate section for cantilever brakes, especially post-style cantilever brakes, where your brake pads are not threaded on with a little nut like these are. Your brake pads are actually just bare aluminum posts. All the adjustment comes from how you bolt it onto the, uh, the brake arm, and you sort of move it with pliers or with a 5 millimeter wrench until it's just about right, and then you take a 10 millimeter wrench and lock that adjustment down and while you do that it moves the pad back to where you don't want it and then you do that about 50 times and you know hey presto you've set up your brakes so Shimano comes along they invent a product called a V-brake and a V-brake uh, is just the most simple brake you can imagine I talked about it in the last video but it is two arms they stand up like this pads are attached to the arms Whoop. Let me open the box. Mm, do I even have a noodle? Sorry for my wiggliness. Such a wiggly puppy. So, rather than your cable coming down and having a straddle cable, a separate piece of cable, as we spoke about before, in the adapters video, you have this piece of metal called the noodle. The cable runs down, the housing stops here, cable runs down through this, pops out that side, and is clamped here. So when you pull the cable, all it does is just pinch the rim between these two pads. So simple, so powerful, it's, uh, it's just an amazing, effective engineering system. Uh, or amazingly engineered brake system, rather. Sounds like somebody needs a cup of coffee. And so with all of these brakes, you have your fork, or frame. There are small receiver holes for the springs. There's a spring pin there, you can see. These slot into the holes, over the posts, and the spring imparts return tension to the brake. Put them on both sides. Cable pulls, brake closes. Cable pulls, brake closes. So, less noise, more power, one of the best designs of all time. Shimano's V-brake, although currently they just use a normal V-brake, much like these TRPs, Shimano's V-brakes were very interesting because they had something called parallel push. And parallel push, do you see this strange linkage in parallelogram? 
these were really cool. So one of the problems with setting your brakes up like this, where they just twist over like this, is that this edge of the pad hits the, the rim first. I'm the rim. Look at me. So ideally, you would have a brake pad that moved across like this, straight across. So Shimano's parallel push brakes, you install them, those linkages in that parallelogram make the pad more or less move just straight in. So, oh god, this one's missing parts. What a wonderful design, right? Um, really, my favorite V-brake design is sort of unparalleled. Here's the problem. Added complexity, added problems. There are many, many, many parts in this brake. And, although rebuildable, yeah, good luck finding a rebuild kit for these. Do you see this slop here? This whole thing gets slop. And the more slop this has, the more your brakes are going to shudder, chatter, and squeal when you use them. So, you know, they'll still stop you like, like a motherfucker. But the problem with these is that when they start to get worn, you know, you hit a bump and you hear a, a slap. Stop your bike and you hear... Eep! Although, some would say that's a good pedestrian deterrent. I'm not sure. So, Shimano's Parallel Push V-Brakes. Some of the best out there. There were other attempts at simplifying brakes. Oh my god, what were these called? Direct Curve by Cane Creek? So, direct curve brakes are very interesting. What they do is they do a delete on the noodle. What you have is a cable stop there. You can see that this arm extends up and past, and it still has plenty of clearance, maybe more clearance than the traditional V-brake. Housing comes in, hits the stop, cable comes through to this clamp, and then your brakes work as normal. There's no noodle, though. They move in like this. Another, and these were, they're silly, and they look like the, uh, I don't know, what was that G.I. Joe enemy, Cobra? They sort of look like the Cobra logo. But um, one neat thing about some of these brakes, not, not every one of the direct curve brakes, but some of them, is that they are totally ambidextrous. So, you see how the plate where the pad is attached unbolts? Everything unbolts. Everything can be taken apart. And what is interesting is, rather than have your cable come in from here like this, you have the ability to flip every damn thing, including the spring, including the spring stop. Do you see there's a hex head there? You can unscrew it and screw it on the other side. So, you can run these brakes like this, and it doesn't care. All you have to do is unbolt all of the things and flip them over. I thought that was pretty neat. Um, I'm not sure how often it would come into play. You know, you're mostly just going to set them up once and leave them alone. But certain brakes have um, cable routing issues, and it's, you know, if it's no skin off their back to increase their cost in machining these, it's a wonderful way to do it. Um, these are going up on eBay at some point. Uh, who knows what they'll go for. I only had one example of these. A really fancy pants set, which I just, I wish I could afford to put a set of them on my own bikes. These are the Avid Arch Rivals. Now this comes from a time period when Avid actually made nice stuff, which may be hard to believe, but it's true. At one point or another, Avid made nice stuff. And what you have are beautifully machined brakes. These brakes, all the fittings on them, perfect, very little slop. The pivots, I don't know if you noticed, but this type, it's just riding, it's just riding on the post. It's just got a bushing, there's no bearings. You know, if this gets rusty or, or corroded or there's a problem in there, this, uh, this has a really hard time moving. The arch rival brakes 
beautiful as they are, are really, really durable and useful as well. They ride, oh my god, oh my god, whatever, they ride on cartridge bearings. So cool. And so what these are, I am sure, <laughs> are an attempt to offer equal braking power to Shimano's parallel push brakes with similar features, but not uh, infringe on any of Shimano's patents. So it's a totally different way of achieving the same effect, where we have the pads come in straight. You see that? The pads come straight to the rim. These are really strong brakes as well, because they've integrated this brake booster arch into the assembly. So, ugh. Not only are these some of the coolest brakes ever, although this spring is really dodgy. I mean, the fact that it just sort of sits there and I, oh God, can I tighten? Let's see if I can tighten. There we go. So I can actually tighten the spring with that thumb screw. It seems as though you wouldn't want a thumb screw to do that. Would you, wouldn't you want to just set it up once and sort of forget about it? Okay. The brake levers for them. Oh my effing God. It's like Robocop's dick and it's got me hard. This thing is a beautifully made lever. The uh, the avid speed dial levers of today are are just a pale ghost of what these are. So you see the dial on top. The speed dial levers are interesting because, as we spoke about before, cantilever slash road and V brake slash mountain have a different cable pull ratio, and. If you have ever tried to put mountain V-brake levers on uh, or connect them to a road caliper, you will find out very quickly that the lever feel is awful and you have low power. And it's the same, vice versa. If you put a uh, cantilever brake lever uh, and connect it to a V-brake, it's going to feel mushy and horrible. So, so what, you, what you have with the cantilever is is uh, generally two things. There are exceptions to these, of course, obviously, but the cantilever brake levers came first. And what you will find is that this distance here from the pivot to where the cable rides is generally less than one inch or maybe right at one inch. That seems to be about the right amount to pull a road caliper or a cantilever brake. So this is the classic design. The V as you can see, is far greater than an inch. So as a quick visual, if you're digging through used parts bins or if you, you know, are trying to put brakes from one bike onto another, if you want to know if the mountain style levers that you have are V or cantilever, use the, the one inch or more than one inch test. It'll generally yield good results. So what they did is they made this adjustable and it's adjustable from uh, V-brake to almost road, you can get these to work with pretty much any road or cantilever brake. But you can also fine tune the feel anywhere in that range. So, you know, one thing when you're setting up brakes is that the rear brake has a really, really long stretch of cable and housing. And so often you'll have sort of a mushy feeling rear brake and the front brake will feel quite nice and snappy. Now there are different ways of getting around this. You can balance the uh, spring tension, you can use uh, no-con housing, which is housing that are, are uh, uncompressible little beads of aluminum, um, and that, that really adds to the stiffness of the brake and, and the lever feel. Um, or if you had a pair of these, or even the modern speed dial lever equivalents, what you can do is you can just dial one of your brakes a little bit down and really balance the lever feel. So all in all, very neat. There are other ways to switch levers from V-brake to cantilever and vice versa. So here's a good example from Shimano. These are a, a uh, transitional lever shifter system from Shimano and they work with either. 
So right now you see it in the V-brake configuration. See those two little rubber spacers? All you have to do to put it in cantilever configuration, while well, they're hard as rocks now, is unscrew these two tabs and move them above the carriage where the cable sits. The carriage will then sit down here and it's blocked from going into the V position by those rubber stops when you reverse them. Um, if you want V-brakes but don't want weird adapters or you're using uh, road levers, you can also get mini V-brakes. Um, in my opinion, Tektro, or rather TRP, which is like Tektro Racing Products or something, are really the, the kings or queens or whatever of making mini Vs. These ones aren't that many, they're sort of in between. They make a model that's even shorter. It's a very, very short V-brake. So you have sort of the simplicity of the V-brake, you have most of the power, but not all of it. You have the ease of setup, and they work natively with uh, road levers or cantilever levers. So, yeah, this is some weird V-brake garbage. And again, it really is an adult yo-yo, you know. <sighs> well, I'm signing off. I hope you found that illuminating, or at least minimum not boring. Good night.